It's about democracy. And we've talked about it before, yes. and uh, I was proposing that we have a perpetual type of electoral system yeah. with uh, computers and uh, the technology that we have nowadays. It is possible to have a perpetual type of electoral system, whereas uh, you don't have to wait for uh, the government to call for elections, but the individual could go and elect and re-elect their MLAs anytime they want. Uh, that is called a perpetual electoral system. It, it's one of the questions in our calendar, yep. and uh, I wonder what you think about it. Well, I think it's an interesting idea. I think that there's lots we can do to enhance democracy. I have some concerns about it. You know, politics in, in North America and uh, demo, in a democratic countries, whether it be South America, North America, Europe, is very expensive. And the challenge of electoral politics is, and you see it in the United States, where, by the way, they have more elections, they have more referenda, they have uh, more recall, they have more measures that you would think would increase citizen control over government. And we know that's not the case. In fact, they re-elect their House of Representatives every two years. And what the effect of that has been to give those with resources hugely more power, because they are in a position every day with money to mobilize people and the rest of us, I mean, people are working longer and longer these days. So I'm not sure. I believe that ideas such as this that enhance local democracy and enhance individual power are good ideas. But I think you have, we have to seriously discuss them and not just... And, and I think in, in a general sense that the system we have now with enhanced citizen power is probably the best system. Yeah, you're referring to the amount of money that uh, politicians need in the states to uh, to become electable. And that, and that's uh, but part, uh, yeah, partly yeah. Beca it's partly because they have a perpetual election campaign in the United States. It's partly because of that, and and that perpetual. How is that they have perpetual elections? In the well, states? first first of all, they have perpetual elections in the states because, in the, at least in the House of Representatives, they have much more frequent elections than we have in Canada. They have more frequent, year. but not perpetual. They're, and, and, and therefore, they're constantly in campaigns. In addition to those elections, they have primary elections to name candidates. They have a very expensive election process. Well, we have the same so thing what, with what, parties what, here. What we have to do, I think, in Canada, what we have to do in Canada is to take measures to give citizens more control over their lives. How about control of my vote? If I could recall my board, wouldn't that give me more? We, we, ha we have some of those provisions today. And I think, but, I, you know, we have recall and, and referenda law today that are not widely used. Because but it's th impossible to use. Well, but I think, I think that we have, to, we have to be careful to not give an electoral uh, advantage to those with the most resources and the most power. How about to the voter? I am the voter well, and I, I want to have uh, uh, control of my own vote. And, that's, uh, and that, I think, is a reasonable, uh, a reasonable thing to ask. And that's, so, that's, that's why, though, voters have to be given, I think, real choices and real options. And they need to put pressure on the political system to provide those. So I don't think there's one answer to that. I think it's an interesting idea. I don't reject it out of hand. I'm just raising some issues mm -hmm. that I think I think the more elections you have, the more vote, voting opportunities you have, some, sometimes you normally think, well, that will increase democratic accountability and democratic power. And it doesn't? But, but if you have uh, significantly more resources to invest in that, then that may give an advantage not to those who right now are under the present system lacking power. It may give, even enhance the power of others. So I think that's part of the discussion that we have to have. And, 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 I, and I'm, I have an open mind about it. I'm prepared to talk to you about it. But I, that's my, those are some of my warnings about what okay. you're suggesting. Would you be prepared to consider that during elections, those people with more resources do have the advantage of more advertising. Yes. So that is a, a problem that al already exists. It's not something that would be created if we had perpetual elections. Oh, I th it's, I, it's the baggage I, that would come with, I, I, with the system of electing. I, I, I think, though, that if you increase the overall amount spent on politics and the overall power of money in politics, and look, if you had an election every year, if I was re-elected every year and went to How office, about every day? Well, every day, but let's, let's say every year, because that's more, that's more accountability than now, right, you, you, under, your, under your sort of thing. If I was reelected every year, um, uh, first of all, I'm spending a lot of time campaigning, which is a good thing, and I do that. I meet with my commu community and my residents of my community every day. But, but a meeting, uh, but a yearly election would, I think, give advantage not to, uh, not to progressive politics, but to those who have more resources. So you were uh, saying uh, more elections no, means I'm less not, democracy. It, I'm just saying it doesn't necessarily mean it. And so we have, to, we, have to, we have to look at measures to enhance our democracy that, that truly change and give opportunity and more power to individual citizens. I'm saying it doesn't, it doesn't immediately flow um, 
that uh, doesn't immediately flow, that having daily elections, weekly elections, monthly elections, or yearly elections gives more power to people if they don't have the means to participate fully in the process. Uh, and for me, anyway, the most important political reform issues, and I told you this before, are ensuring that people have equal means. So I, be I believe, that's why I believe, that there should be uh, equal spending. If you want to run against me in the next election, no matter what circumstance, I shouldn't have ten times the means that you do to run and to communicate my message. I think in a democracy yeah. that those issues of means are important and those are important power issues too. And when, I, when we discussed this the last time, I, that's what I said to you. I said that I thought those issues of financing of politics yes. were some of the most important issues and in I terms of enhancing democracy. I agree with you 100 percent. That is an important issue. Yeah. But the term of office is another very important issue as well. And I'm, I'm, pro I'm, I'm <laughs> delighted to talk about it and I'm interested yeah. in it. I'm, yeah. But I'm, not, I'm just not accepting yeah. it out of hand. That's all, Peter. Yeah. But Thank you very much for your time. Hey, any time. And, 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 yeah. and I think these, these ideas of uh, – I think we should be debating much more often ideas of what democracy yes, means for us yes, every yes, day yes. in our society. The, the